What up fish friends? Follow along as I go over the setup for this 75 gallon planted tank. Thanks to my cousin who hired me to set this up for her. I appreciate her supporting my business. I'll be doing a voiceover since her husband's working from home, so you won't get to see my face much, which is maybe a plus. Background. I dig the black background and so does my cousin, so I painted it on with some cheap acrylic paint uh, from this company called Folk Art. It took two coats for this tank. Planning. I usually like to plan out the hardscape before showing up to someone else's home, so that's what I'm doing here in my garage. Her request was for something simple, nothing experimental, I guess she's seen some of my other weird tanks not go so well. Um, also to have two islands, curving branches, and a sand path that goes all the way to the back. The stone is granite and the wood is ponderosa pine. I collected both of them locally myself. The styrofoam is useful in protecting the glass from these heavy rough chunks of rock. To attach the wood to the rocks, I'm using some 100% silicone with no anti-mold additives. It's not intended for aquarium use, even though I've used this in the past, so I know it's fine. But if you're worried about it, you can spend a little extra to get some products designed specifically for fish tanks. The silicone will need 48 hours to fully dry and cure before I can count on it to hold the wood down underwater. Although full disclosure, one of these branches didn't end up uh, coming up. I set up the equipment before the aquascaping part cause I like to get it out of the way. And Autodoser is a great tool to get a consistent fertilizing regimen going. It's a really fun upgrade, but it's also not essential especially if you really aren't doing much fertilizer in a low energy system or something. But basically you gotta prime the unit, drill holes in the fur bottles, plumb it to the tank, and set the programming. I won't bore you with all that now because I've already covered that in another video. CO2 is another non-essential upgrade. It can really help take your plant game to the next level and beyond by basically roiding out your plants. Uh, some people don't like CO2 systems and that's completely fine. You can have a really nice plant to tank without it, but you'll never get that kind of lush growth that you'll see in this tank, um, like that garden look, at least in my opinion, without CO2. So plan to spend an extra buck 50 to 200 for a system. I'm a big fan of the uh, Oase Biomaster canister filter. It's a little more expensive than some of the other filters out there, but not by much. Some cool features that this filter has are the built-in heater and pre-filter sponges that make cleaning a breeze. Make sure to clean everything out before running it, especially the sponges. They stink of synthetic material smell big time. Uh, you can even see the foam when you wring out the sponges under the tap. Obviously that is not going to be good for anything alive in your fish tank. So really rinse it out. In terms of filter media, I like to run a couple trays of sponges and a few of lava rock to promote beneficial bacteria growth. I'm not a fan of the stock plastic option. That's what this lava rock here is replacing. To plumb the inline CO2 diffuser, I need to heat up the end of the hose to make it a little more flexible. It's a good trick for getting the out and intakes on as well, especially if you're using something fragile like a glass lily pipe. Soil time. Using land and aquarium soil for plants, it's a decent price and a good product. If you find something that's cheaper, go for it not really too picky about brands. They're almost all about the same quality. After creating a couple mounds, I push a little path and pour sand down. 
My goal was to have the carpeting plants fill in around the sides and prevent the soil from pouring out. But that didn't really work out so well, so I ended up creating a little barrier with the stones to separate the sand from the soil. Plants! Time to plant! Start by saturating the soil with some water. You can either spray it 100,000 times or just pour a little bit of water down. Prep your plants by pulling off any rock wool or growing medium like gel. Uh, rinse it off if you need to. And then trim up the ends of the roots a bit to promote some new growth and prevent rot. Then grab them with some forceps and stick them in the soil. Other plants like ferns can just be glued to the wood or rocks using some gel super glue of the cyanoacrylate variety. Go through and mist your plants down every now and then, especially if it's taking you a while to plant. Tall plants in the back, medium in the middle, and short ones in the front. You can put tall ones in the front if you want to maximize hiding spots, but it's going to kind of kill the view for the rest of the tank. If you want that zen garden look, you'll want to layer them so that you can taper up towards the back of the tank. Moss is a great one to use over spots where I've silicone wood and rock together. It hides the ugly silicone plus it creates a more natural transition between two different materials. Here we are down the road. My cousin's done a great job maintaining this tank. There was a little BBA phase when the CO2 ran out. I recommend lowering your lights if your tank's accustomed to CO2, at least until you can get a refill. That'll help keep algae down. That's that, a quick rundown of setting up this planted tank. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of the tank. Make sure to hit that like and sub button. Till next time, see ya.